I think it's a it's it's a it's a very complex question um, how research infrastructures influence um, the impact of individual researchers, and it's it's complex and and difficult because um, the the whole system of how we measure impact is uh, predates digital research infrastructures. So the impact is usually measured in. Uh, on the basis of your academic publications and in these methodologies you know journal articles usually weigh more than monographs and, and there's there's a system uh, in place which is incredibly capitalistic in in its nature that you have to deal with um, big publishers in prestigious journals etc um, that system was in place uh, before players like Daria and Claren came came on the scene. And the, the, the existing system doesn't take into account the fact that we no longer produce only papers. Mm. Um, we produce increasingly um, digital annotated editions. We produce software. We collect data. So there's a whole range of activities that are essential to the creation of a, uh, and the main sustainability of a digital research infrastructure that are actually not, that, that do not translate into, um, you know, points for promotion at a university, etc. And I think this is one of the central challenges that actually we have as humanists, as scholars these day, these days, is to. Um, to transform the system um, and, and call me a revolutionary. Uh, but um, things will have to change. Now, I, I think the role, the digital research infrastructures cannot do everything on their own. They cannot, you know, we are not at the barricades. We're not um, squatting the universities at this point in our um, careers. But I think the, the more we develop um, digital research infrastructures and the more the more we show what kind of research is possible using digital methods the 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 academic academia at large will kind of have to adapt um, to this new um, model of scholarly production so um, my answer is that um, I'm not sure I mean maybe it's not the answer that you want to hear but I'm not sure that digital research infrastructure are in a position to to influence the impact of individual scholars as much as they should, as much as they could, but I certainly hope that that will change over time. Scholarship. Now things are changing in this respect as well, and and um, I think things are better than they used to be maybe ten years ago. But but I think it it still remains um, something that that actually the you know people who are running digital research infrastructures will will have to keep pursuing as a goal to explain that uh, we have different modes of production and that we need to evaluate um, um, what we produce in a different way. One model, for instance, already exists. It's a tricky one, but it exists. It's, it's called post-publication peer review. Okay, So right now you submit an article, usually you submit an article to, to a journal, it gets peer reviewed, it gets published, that's the end of the story. A different model would be to um, write papers, deposit them in your university depository or repository or the digital research infrastructure such as Daria in HAL or somewhere like that. And then to create a system where after you publish a draft, people can actually comment and help you improve the article. Now, it's, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds because A, people have to find time to read <laughs> and improve, um, and some people might not be that um, easy about, or feel that easy about submitting or opening up their unfinished work to the general public. So in that sense, I think there's, there's something that individual researchers can do as well, is that try to think about um, not striving just for perfection for the sake of career, but kind of st striving for more um, open and community-oriented scholarly process as such. Um, I think that's where we're kind of... So on the one hand, we would have advocacy, and on the other hand, we would have scholars who, who decide to share more of their data and unfinished work to, to slowly change the way things work. 
Um, I think it's still about bringing people together. So, for example, I've got a, an example of a social science researcher. She said um, she wanted to do some work on her laptop and her laptop wasn't powerful enough. So she said, hey, you don't happen to know if there's a supercomputer at Ghent University? And I said, ah, yes, I do. So I was able to put her in contact with the supercomputing centre and they helped her, they gave her training in how to use a supercomputer and then she could process all the data she was working on um, speeches, uh, doing network analysis on speeches of European parliamentary papers. So she was able to do a lot of her processing on the supercomputer, for example. So I think in a day-to-day -day impact, that had a huge impact on her because she could do, you know, instead of cr cranking on her computer, she could do the results, the analysis she wanted to do a lot quicker. Um, I think it's also to do with visibility as well and making connections. So, for example, we can put researchers in contact with each other, so from different research groups. Uh, and, for example, we've got a new um, public library and digital innovation centre here in, in Ghent called The Croak. Um, so it's really nice because we've got the public library un underneath and then we've got um, the University of Ghent and all various different research groups who are working on digital initiatives that may not have necessarily worked together. The Ghent Centre for Digital Humanities is also part of that group, so we can start getting to know each other, understanding what our different research fields are, and then work together in different ways and making interconnections. So the impact, we're starting to get to know each other at this stage, but uh, for example today I had an international visitor and introduced him to one of the professors in, in the Croak and he, they immediately thought, ah yes, we could do this and we could do that and perhaps apply for funding for that. So I would say that that's quite a big impact. I think it's the idea of strength in numbers. If you've got research infrastructure, which is in most cases well-defined, there's, there's a structure around it with uh, management and, and coordination that makes it easier for other researchers to latch onto this. They don't need to set up everything themselves, they can just take advantage of the infrastructure that's already there, uh, which makes it again a place where uh, a lot of input and feedback comes together from all these different researchers uh, so that it can even become a better infrastructure uh, and people can learn from um, interacting with the infrastructure but also interacting with, them, uh, with, with all the other researchers but also with the stakeholders of all these researchers so it almost turns um, the pathway to impact in a more interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary um, process which again, from, from a lot of studies, has shown that interdisciplinary work has a bigger impact because you address more societal issues um, from different perspectives. Um, so in, in that respect, I think it sometimes lowers the threshold for certain researchers, um, especially because if you term it as um, research infrastructure, it's closer to their habitat, uh, which is kind of the, the trick I use when I talk about impact. I start from their perspective on research. It's, it's about your research. So they maybe just slowly tumble into impact because they are going through a research infrastructure while there's an undercurrent of outreach in that infrastructure, uh, if I'm making sense. Um, so yes, I do think that um, universities should invest in, in more of these accessible research infrastructures that are being maybe even funded uh, through structural funds that in that way uh, have a sustainability to them. Uh, and so they become also recognizable for the outside world. That's, that's where we need to go with our questions and there's a whole, there's, there's this critical mass addressing our questions. Uh, so I think in that respect, researchers should organise themselves around these infrastructures and we should, as a university, strategically support them as well. As a researcher who, uh, who is willing to uh, contribute to such a project, 
of course dissemination of your of your results is one big is one big argument uh, with a little caveat in there uh, the platform must be able to stress the individual contribution and make clear whose contribution this is so that for example a researcher can later cite it as their own work uh, in order to well, not lose it for their own CV and so on and so forth. 